Today we're going to talk about the four essential sections that should be on every developer portfolio. And then we're going to show you how do you use that as a sales tool to win that first software job. So today let's talk about something real important, which is portfolios. At Coder Founder, we spend a great deal of time in building portfolios because we think they are the essential sales tool to getting that first software job. Now you may be afraid to put your portfolio out there because other people have these kind of rock star portfolios. And so what you do out of fear is you don't make one and you just try to trade on your resume. I want to break a myth for you right now. I do not believe that a resume, especially starting out, is strong enough to break you into that job. I think you must have a portfolio to do that. Now, if you're thinking I don't have one or I don't know what to do, well, you're in the right place because we're going to tell you exactly what to put on that portfolio. Now, before we get started, let me tell you a little story about a, a guy that went to an interview um, and took his portfolio with him. He was interviewing for a job and he showed his portfolio during the interview process. And this is key. You must ask people to do it. And we'll talk about it a little bit more later, but you must ask people, hey, look at my portfolio. Well, he was brave enough to ask them to look at his portfolio and they looked at it and he demoed a project inside of that. And guess what? That person looked at him and said, hey, can we use that project when you are employed here? And that shows you the power of a portfolio versus a resume or versus you as answering a bunch of interview questions. The portfolio establishes you as that pro coder that you want to be. And so the power of the portfolio is telling that story. That guy got hired based on a demo and his ability to talk about it. So let's talk a little bit more about exactly what you need to put on that portfolio. One of the things that um, I think is essential to any portfolio is that it must be attractive clean and beautiful and then a portfolio must present well because if you show a clean attractive portfolio to a hiring manager they're going to think that the programming behind it is also very clean and very well organized and great if you show them something that the colors are mismatched or it doesn't work kind of right or the images don't display well they'll think that the code behind it is also equally unorganized so the clean attractiveness of the portfolio is job number one I cannot stress this enough. It does matter how it looks. A lot of people think, hey, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to show them my cool code or my cool thing. But the, but the portfolio must be clean and attractive. And you probably think, well, I'm not a designer. How do I do this? I'm a full stack web dev. I think it's okay to use a template. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that think you must do everything by hand and you must start over. And that's not true at all. Please listen to me when we tell this to students every day inside of Code Refinery. Use a template, use something that's pre-built because they're gonna hire you based on your projects, not on the template, but they'll definitely not hire you if the template is, is broken and ugly. So think about it for a second. The template itself isn't what's gonna get you hired, it's the fact that it makes it look attractive is what is gonna get you hired. So use something that's already built, pre-built, and spend more time on your projects as we go through this. So use something like Bootstrap or something like that because it'll be well seen on mobile, tablet, desktop, and it'll be responsive. And so all of those things inside the template will be clean, professional, and beautiful. And that is job number one. That first step to winning that job is to making sure that you use some other template or something like that to make it look cool. Okay, so let's get into the weeds. Let's get very technical. I believe that if you're watching this, I'm going to tell you exactly what to put on the portfolio exactly the sections. I think your portfolio consists of four sections. Now you can have more, but it needs to have these four. Section one needs to be at the very top of the page. It needs to be about me. Now you can put your picture on there or not. It doesn't really matter, but it needs to have your name and how they can get in contact with you. And then some kind of mission statement, some kind of thing that says, I'm passionate about coding. I am a software developer. It also in this section, if you have an education that matters, okay, let's say that you went to MIT or you went somewhere else or you went to Coder Foundry, um, you put that up front and say, this is my education. Now, if you're self-taught and your education doesn't necessarily go with um, the job, you don't have to highlight that. And what you would do instead is highlight the skills or the languages and the types of things that you can do. 
I'm a C-sharp developer. I also know jQuery, JavaScript, whatever. And so this section contains a passion statement or a mission statement, and then it talks about your skills and your education that directly relate to software development. Now, the next section that we can put in there is we want to have a section called projects. And then in the projects, we want these very business oriented projects. Now, project is kind of very, what I would call a big kind of software effort that you need to do. Now, if you're looking at me right now and you're like, I don't have any projects and that's okay. What you should do is start building one now. And here's the basic things that each of these projects need to have. You need to be able to have a login screen, authorization and authentication, and it must support something like roles. It must utilize the database complete with like admin screens and perform a business function. Now, Coder Founder, we build a blog, a bug tracker, and a financial portal. And those three projects together demonstrate your ability to solve different business domains but also they're in domains that make sense to the hiring manager. Now, if your business project is in an obscure domain or it solves a problem that they're not familiar with, then they're trying to figure out what is the app supposed to do versus looking at it and saying, oh, that's really good. Todd McFarlane is a very famous comic artist and they asked him, how do you break into the comic industry? You know, he wrote Spawn and those kind of things. And he said, well, if you're applying to Marvel, you draw Spider-Man. If you're applying to DC, you draw Batman. Because if they look at that Batman that you draw, they can judge to see if it's good or not. You don't present your custom character. And this is the same way with projects. Show a project that the user will immediately understand. Pretty much if you're locked on a hiring manager, Every single hiring manager you'll meet with or interview with does have a bug tracker. And that's why we build one here at Coder Foundry. They have seen a blog before. They've seen um, lots of blogs out there. So they know what that's supposed to do. And on the financial side, everyone has a checking account, savings account, whatever. And they know in intuitively how that should work. So we build those projects that solve business problems that the, the hiring manager can understand what the domain is operating in. Okay, your third section, which should go under the project section, is what I call the coding challenges section. Now, a lot of people just have this, and this is the only thing that's on their portfolio. So I want you to build those business projects up top, but I also want you to build some coding challenges. Now, what's a coding challenge? It's something that doesn't necessarily have a database. It's more of an algorithm type question or maybe an interview question. Something like FizzBuzz, Reverse a String, Palindrome, those types of, of problems that you can solve with code, maybe something with just purely JavaScript. Um, and then that way you can show your algorithmic skills. Now, if you're wondering what coding challenges are, just Google it and you can get a bunch of them and then just create those and solve those online. Now, what I would say on your portfolio when you do solve a coding challenge, go ahead and spend some time on the UI of that coding challenge as well. So if you make a fizz buzz, make it look cool. If you make a reverse of string, make it look cool. Don't just put it, say, hey, I did this in the console or here's the link to my JavaScript. You can download it and try to run it. Make a UI for it and then solve the challenge in code. The last section that I think that you need is obviously your contact section at the bottom. And so this is how they can reach you through email, through LinkedIn, through whatever. How do they contact you? How do they do that? And so if you put all those on there and you put it at the top it is about me, a project section, a coding section, and at the bottom, my contact section. So let's talk about one bonus section, some kind of extra credit if you want, if you want to say. As if you could add technical writings to your portfolio is very, very powerful. So like if you write a LinkedIn article, um, put that also on your portfolio as well or link back to it. If you're on Medium or if you've built your own blog site like we do at Coder Foundry, you can link over to the blog where they can read about the things that you're writing, uh, that, um, the read about things you're writing about. And these articles should not be whether you think Star Wars or Star Trek is good. It should talk about the internals of JavaScript or why you like C Sharp or this thing you discovered with databases. Write about your journey as a software developer and the things that that's interest you in the software world. It's not your opinion on this or that. It's more about the technical things that you can do so they can understand how you think and, and, and establish yourself as more of an expert than necessarily just a junior dev looking for a job. So that's that bonus section that you can add is write about technical things and show them on your portfolio. Okay, now that you've got the portfolio, it consists of the four sections, possibly the bonus section that we talked about, and you've got all your projects, your coding challenges, and everything you wanna do, the next step for you isn't now you're past the construction phase. I want to give you one more tip. I want you to treat this portfolio as an absolute sales tool. If you were selling software, 
The portfolio is the product that you're selling so that you can get a job. That means that you must have all your projects must be able to be demoed. Okay. And this is a software demo. And that means you have a script about what you want the hiring manager to see. You walk them through the login process or whatever it is that your project does and you demo that to them. Now here's what's cool. If you demo things, you do what we teach at Cody Friday is take control of the interview. If they were going to ask you 50 C sharp interview questions, say in a dot nine interview, but then you show them a piece of software written in C sharp, then guess what? They're going to ask you questions about the software that you've written. Second, if you bring your laptop with you, you may be able to even walk them through the code. So therefore you've moved from answering questions from memory into showing them as a code walkthrough of your projects on your site. And that is very, very powerful. So build the, build all the projects, the coding challenges and the portfolio, make it look clean and attractive, and then practice your demo with someone in your sphere of influence. Maybe it's your husband, your wife, your mom, dad, brother, sister, or whatever, or just talk to your cat or find a rubber duck, whatever you want to do, talk to them and work through that demo and then win that next job. So I hope this helps. Good luck and keep coding. Hey, if you're trying to win um, that first software job or you'd like to break into the software industry, at Coder Founder, we will teach you how to build the portfolio we just talked about. Um, but if that interests you, I would like you to check this out, coderfriendly.com slash job roadmap. And we'll give you the five essential steps that you need to to break into that first job. We would love and be honored to be your coach, your mentor, and your teacher to get you that first software job. That's coderfriendly.com slash job roadmap.